Season 3 Invitational will be taking place at the end of August in New Jersey. No mm -hmm. adjective, nothing, just New Jersey. I was going to go negative. I thought about going positive. Keep it simple. What I've been really impressed by over the last couple months of Standard is Mardu still hanging around the metagame, even though nary a peep for Butcher of the Horde. That card's barely shown up at all. That just makes me sad. A good curve of creatures and Crackling Doom has been enough to make the color combination mostly viable. A couple of lands here from Longville, Nomad Outpost, and a Temple of Triumph. Ketter with an Opulent Palace. He does have a copy of Thought Season in hand, but he's going to start by sacrificing a Windswept Teeth. He'll go down to 19. We've got a Forest or Planes on the way here for Mr. Ketter. He's a man who loved dragons. You think a lot, of, a lot about his success last year. And it had a lot to do with the power of Stormwrath Dragon. Red green strategies, Jun strategies. Yeah. This one a little bit different, obviously. No lack of dragons here, but There's more of a control deck. Seven carry added. He'll pass the turn back to Longville. Longville will take a draw step. Picked up a copy of Soulfire Grandmaster. Also has a Seeker of the Way in hand. Tough thing here for Matthew is a lot of his lands are entering the battlefield tapped at this point, so he's kind of playing off curve in a way. Yeah, he's been a turn behind most of the way through here. There's a Seeker of the Way. Ketter will take a draw. So has the Thought Season in hand. He'll play a copy of Seder Wayfinder. Turn over a couple of cards here. Dragonlord Ochitai. Death Mish Raptor. Sylvan Carry added, but he did find a hit there in Temple of Malady. So that could be his land for the turn if he'd like for it to be. But now here's Thoughtseize. So we'll get an idea of what Longville is working with. A Haven of the Spirit Dragon has a land. He's also got a copy of Kolagon's Command. That's Soulfire Grandmaster, Stormbreath Dragon, and Thunderbreak Region. Pretty slow hand here. And uh, to me, the card that really stands out is Thunderbreak Region. Yeah. Otherwise, Matthew's, without that card, Matthew's not doing very much next turn. There's no guarantee he does anything the following turn of significance because he doesn't have land number five for Stormbreath rolled up just yet. And Kolagon's command puts an interesting wrinkle in this hand, excuse me, because if he does take the Thunderbreak region, we can get it back. Sure, but you're at least swallowing up the whole turn that way. Sure. The well, Thunderbreak region is what Ketter does select. Keep in mind, he has not played a land just yet. You know he found a Temple of Malady, so looks like that's going to be the land that will be entering the battlefield. You get a trigger. That card's going to stay on top pretty quickly, it appears, for Ketter. We're going to head Longville's way. Longville will take a draw step. Picked up another copy of Soulfire Grandmaster. You talked about how he's taking a more aggressive approach. He has cards like Seeker of the Way and the Grandmaster, where other people do not. And the two drops are okay in this matchup. It's not like Ken's deck is especially good at invalidating the ground. But you want to be casting these on turn two, and not on turns three and four. Secret of the Way comes across for two points of damage. See what the follow-up will be here for Longville. He's just going to pass the turn back. Ketter will take a draw step here. Temple of Malady. Going to leave that card on top. Interesting to see the inclusion of Kolgon's command into some of these standard decks because it's not as, standard is a less friendly card uh, format rather for this card than modern. There's fewer artifacts floating around, and shock isn't nearly the effective removal spell that it is in modern, where there's all these cheap creatures floating around. That said, these modern decks have incorporated a good effect. It is a powerful card. We do know that. Kolgon's command picking up Thunderbreak region, dealing two damage over to Ketter. The region's going to enter the battlefield now. You saw the Temple of Silence, too, from Longville. That put the top card to the bottom. It appears as though the region is in. Though Ketter does have a copy of Foul Tongue Invocation, so there might be a response here from Kent. Murderous Cut as well, though I don't believe he has a dragon to pair with any of this just yet. I mean, Kent's honestly kind of out of action. He's got a couple of removal spells and some mana, and that's about it. It doesn't have very much going on. Here comes Seeker of the Way. There's Foul Tongue Invocation. Modern IP players, that is time in the round. 
No dragon to reveal. So Secret of the Way is going to bite the dust. And we'll go back Ketter's way. He'll take a draw stab. What he is currently missing is a big dragon. Though I think he may have just found one. Yep. Here's Dragon Lord Tromoka. Pass that turn back. As the Hope Longville does not have a removal spell, and we know the Mardu decks are full of those. Take a draw step here. It's a Thunderbreak region. That's not a removal spell. Either well, are the cards in hand. I mean, Matthew can play Stormbot Dragon and Race. I mean, he's got a lot of dragons in hand. And if Ken doesn't have removal, he could potentially win this race. Yeah, racing against a lifelinker is pretty tough. Yep. But uh, I, I think holding back on... This play is bad if Ken has a removal spell, but you're already in trouble against a removal spell because he kills your Stormbreath Dragon. Sure. So you might as well attack. Ketter with a Haven and a Spirit Dragon. In case that Dragon Lunch Mocha does die, he's got a way to bring it back. He'll attack for five. So Longville will go down to 15. Ketter going to go up to 16. Now here's the Sylvan Carry added. Catter's last card is a murderous cut. Makes you wonder what he wants to target with that. Is it Thunderbreak Regent or perhaps Stormbreath Dragon? Stormbreath Dragon's protection from white could play a role in things here. Yeah, I think it's got to be Stormbreath. Crackling Doom's a big draw. There's Soulfire Grandmaster. Here are the attackers. Not just yet, says Catter. Now they get to come in. And now here's Murderous Cut. Going to target Stormbreath Dragon. Thunderbreak Regent will trigger as a dragon has been targeted. So Cutter's going to take three from that trigger, and then he'll take four from the region. It is very important for Matthew Longville to cast his Cracking Doom now. There you go. He's on it. But now you see the synergies come in. You know, the, the land here, so innocuous, but just allows Ken to get this dragon right back mm -hmm. and force Matthew to produce another removal spell. Hey, when the Spirit Dragon is no joke. Ketter will take a draw step. Picked up a copy of Sansep Citadel. Going back to Dramoka territory. He'll pass the turn back. Holding onto a land right now. You hope that doesn't come back to bite him. Stormbreath Dragon was the draw. Right. That was a That's good one. Huge draw. Yep. And I think Ken's best served just playing his lance at this point. Matthew's not playing around anything. He's not playing around a random draw off the top of your deck, and you don't know if that mana could come up and matter. Ketter's down to three. He'll draw a card. Didn't get a great look at what he found. It's a course of crew fix. This might help you able to keep him alive. I suppose that's the upside of holding onto the land in case yep. you draw a Corsair. Let's see what the top card is. Dragonlord Tremoka. That's a land. Up to four. Get to attack. Go up to nine. So he's not dead now. I'd be surprised if Longville would like to block here. Yeah, he'll take the five. Yep. Twelve to nine. Pass the turn back. Longville will draw a card. That was a Battlefield Forge. He'll play that. Got to just keep on a coming in. Don't have much of a choice, right? Here come the attacks. Ketter going to go down to one. Stump out the rest of it. Yep, Soulfire Grandmaster. He's actually going to pass the turn back, not play the Thunderbreak Regent with the ability to return Stormbreath Dragon from the graveyard. Sure, that, that's uh, actually a much sharper play. Yeah. Because Kent may have to, this turn, go attack you with Dragon Lord, Dramoka, play one to block, mm -hmm. and then two Stormbreaths finish up the game. And he will replay Dragon Lord, Dramoka, pass the turn back, and Longville's right on top of it. Cash in the Haven, get back the Stormbreath Dragon. It'll be a lethal attacker in just a moment. His protection from white is very, very powerful text on this card. There is Stormbreath Dragon. Just do not attack with that Thunderbreak region. Oh, no. Hanson, leave the card. Yeah, it's pretty close. But, yep, he did not attack yep. with it. Ken knew that he had his opportunity there. Yep. If, that, if that Thunderbreak region comes in, we got a game. But 
Uh, Matthew pumped the brakes right before, and just the pro white creatures came across. Matthew up a game. Matthew Longville does win game number one here over Ket Ketter. Mardu Dragons, Green Black Dragons. Mardu Dragons currently up one. We take a look at the sideboards here, and we will start with Kent. We've gone over this one a couple of times. They've got some good options here. Three copies of Ultimate Price, three Foul Tongue Invocation, two Duress, two Drown Sorrow, two Tasker, the Golden Fang, and then one of a couple dragons here, Dramoka, Slomgar, and Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. I think you're just going to see the extra removal come in. Three copies of Ultimate Price and three copies of Foul Tongue Invocation, possibly the Tasters as well. And just a bunch of removal. Yeah, just removal. Overpower you with dragons. I imagine that's the game plan here for Ketter. We'll take a look at Longville's side of things. He's got a Kologon's Command, two Crux of Fate, four Angry Gods, four Thoughtseize of Duress, and three cops of Self-Inflicted Wound. I, I think Thoughtseize is probably the best option. Thoughtseize, and I think the Self-Inflicted Wounds come in as well. Not that Self-Inflicted Wound is great against Kent, though it's, it does have moments of being very powerful. It's more of an issue of the inefficient removal that's in Matthew's main deck. Four copies of Chronic Roar, th the copies of Kologon's Command, Kolgon's command is not the end of the world, but th there is some low impact removal, some two drops that aren't very good that are on the draw, and I think he can afford to bring in self inflicted wound because when that card's good, tagging something like Corsair Crufix, uh, Seder Wayfinder, it's not Seder Wayfinder, excuse me, Sylvan Carry added, or especially Dramoka, uh, I think it's worth the upside compared to something like Dramo uh, Draconic Roar. It can certainly have an impact in the matchup, that's for sure. Yeah, it, 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 the upside on that card is very, very high, and I think something like Draconic Roar is always going to be below average. I think that's the first card to go. Yeah, the matchup on Longville's side. He has four copies, and they just don't do very much. So wouldn't be surprised to see that go. Kologon's command as well from his deck. Might get sideboarded out. Just seems like an average card. Yeah, and, uh, you know, with three Foul Tongue Invocations already in the deck, Edicts generally get more powerful the more Edicts that you have because you start drawing them together, and then they just function as, as good, clean removal spells. These players will shuffle up here for game number two. We'll very quickly talk about the Star City Games newsletter. Your source for Magic the Gathering news. You can sign up for free at StarCityGames.com slash newsletter and a lot of awesome content to go along with it, too. Yeah, it's a great summary of events going on on the website and on the Open Series. Also comes with exclusive deck lists and advice from some of the premium writers, an exclusive Cardboard Crack comic. And best of all, it's free to sign up. You can head over to StarCityGames.com slash newsletter and get signed up right now. It's all about the free stuff. Just all free. YouTube, YouTube page, page free. free. This Free. Tacit per play mat? Free. Boom. How can you yes, say you no? you have to sign up for an event. Free. 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 Stop. Free. StarCityGames.com slash newsletter. It's all free. Just <laughs> sign up. It's pretty easy. <laughs> Watching Kent Ketter play Magic? Free. Hanging out with us? Free. free. It's great. How can anyone say no? I just don't understand. Yep. Makes no sense. Alion Trazi Angel Token. Free. Ish. <laughs> Gotta sign up for some things or place an order on the website. But again. <laughs> Mostly free. Yep. It's a great token, too. Ali Eldrazi. As he is sometimes affectionately known. Might be our best token. It's really, t the tokens are so good. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Sam Black's zombie token. Yep. I love Derek Sheets' swan token. Yep. Both of Tom Ross's tokens are great. Mm hmm My favorite is still the Derek Sheets token. The swan? Yeah. All right. You can tell that the person or parties responsible for that token have a really good sense of humor. That's true. It's very true. Maybe one of they will have a Matthew Longville or Kent Ketter token. However, I'm still waiting for that Master Waves token. Someone's got to get that done. And now with Merfolk seeing a lot of burn in modern, duh, it gets to be a little more evergreen. Yeah, you, know, you don't you don't like to cash in your token on a standard card if you don't think it's going to make the transition over to modern. Just won a Grand Prix. Merfolk literally just won a Grand Prix today. Yep, congratulations. So get your Master of Ways tokens. Someone pick that for the Invitational token. You'll get so much play. You can ride a seahorse. Probably, you, I'm, I'm assuming. You could be the seahorse. It just makes things out of water. It's an elemental. It can be anything. Yeah. It's like Hydro Man. It's like Hydro Man. <laughs> My favorite Spider-Man villain. Though, pretty weak villain, I think, overall. Yeah. On the whole, I can't imagine him ever beating Spider-Man. No. He's like kind of a crappier Sandman, and Sandman never <laughs> could touch Spider-Man. <laughs> Which I never understood as a kid. When I was a young teenager, I was like, can Sandman just turn himself into sand and just shoot himself into Spider-Man's nose or something? You know? Like, how is this guy struggling? I feel like if I was Sandman, it wouldn't really be that hard. You are vicious. 
You are truly vicious. Here's a thought seize. A couple of cards here in Longville's hand. Stormbreath Dragon, Goblin Rabble Master, bunch of lands. Not a bad grip. Looks like there might be a copy of Draconic War actually in hand too, which yep. is a little surprising. Yeah, there goes the Rabble Master. There's just not a lot for Draconic War to kill in the matchup. Cool, it, kills, draw. it kills a lot of the same stuff that self-inflicted wound kills. The question is, do you want to cut your edicts or have all of them? To me, it's sort of an all-or-nothing proposition. The edicts are not great against Seder Wayfinder and a couple other cards in the deck, but they do have a very high upside as well. I personally like loading up on all the edicts. In this matchup, I, I, I like it enough. I mean, they're... There are enough big creatures where the edicts are good. There's also enough nonsense where the edicts can be pretty bad. Yeah, but I, I think that Matthew needs to give himself as many opportunities as possible to kill a dragon, because when he can't kill a dragon, it, it's he gets really far behind. Ketter going to sacrifice his one swept teeth. Likely a plane's on the way. So it looks as though he's going to look for a forest here. There we go. Never mind. Our players. Welcome to round five of eight. There's Corsair of That's a card Draconic Roar can't touch. See the top card is here for Ketter. Opulent Palace, pass that turn back over to Longville. Longville will take a draw step, picked up a copy of Crux of Fate. There's a Nomad Outpost, he'll pass the turn back. Slow start here for the Mardu Dragons player. Opulent Palace to draw, Windswept Teeth on top of the deck here for Ketter. He'll take the Windswept Teeth, that'll gain him a life, he's up to 17. I'm interested to see if Crux is even a card on Kent's radar. Is he willing to just curve out with a bunch of non-dragon creatures? Because I would be surprised if I were in Kent's seat. Stormbreath dragging the draw. It's all five mana spells here for Longville. Ketter going to sacrifice his Windswept Teeth. He'll stay at the same life total, but he'd like to see a new card on top of his deck. So perhaps now the Plains is coming. And it is. Cutter will draw. It'll be ultimate price, which is a really nice, efficient removal spell in this matchup. Opulent Palace on top of the deck. Opulent Palace is now going to end the battlefield tap. That'll trigger the Courser. Cutter will gain a life. Top card of the deck after that is Dragon Lord Dramoka. That's convenient. He's firing on all cylinders right now. Powerful spell into a land. That's how you want to do it with Corsair. Yeah. Seeker, the way the draw here. Longville going to go calling on the Storm Fury. I think we might see a murderous cut on that. Yeah, I mean, this is the right card to play for Matthew's side of the table because he can't be hit with the ultimate price you know about, but Kent's got a lot of removal. Yeah. That's gone. Dragon Lord Dramoka, the draw. Top card of the deck after that is Nurborg. Nurborg on the battlefield. I see Corsair building up small advantages here, but that's why the card's so great. Top card of Ketter's deck is Lanamore Waste. That'll be the draw next turn. Corsair going to come across for two. And now a Dragon Lord Dramoka as he does shrug his shoulders and cast the big 5-7. Yeah, I mean, you can see there's some amount of, well, this might die kind of body language from Kent, but also what else are you supposed to do? Yeah. Self-inflicted wound the draw. Also a crux of fate here for Longville. The reactive tools in Matthew's hand right now, the combination of them, pretty awkward. It's also tough, too, because all of his best cards are five mana, which means he can only play one spell a turn, realistically. Yeah, it's just hard for him to do anything with Draconic Roar. <laughs> oh, here's Stormbreath Dragon. It's coming across for four points of damage, so it's 14 all, at least for the moment. Back to Ketter, we'll go. Lanar will waste the draw. Top card of the deck is Foul Tongue Invocation. Dragon Lord Tarka is going to clean that up. Here's an attack for seven. Ketter pretty far ahead in this game at this point. But that Crux of Fate is going to clean up some dragons here in just a moment. Temple of Mal is going to put the top card to the bottom there from Longville. Now here is the crux. So bye-bye dragons. But Cutter is able to reload just fine as he has another Dragon Lord Remoke in hand and the Haven 
of the Spirit Dragon on the battlefield. And a lot of this just ties back to Corsair Crufix accruing so much value over the course of the game. Ken just has a lot of spare resources to work with. Ladies and gentlemen, in the standard open. There's a land. If you are Trigger the Corsair. Be in the top 64. We need to have tax information on file from Another Dragon Lord Dramoka. And for files. two. Ketter is certainly in the driver's so seat right now. Ultimate price is ready as well. Longville already down to five. He'll take a draw. Bloodstained Meyer is what he picked up. But you can just see how Matthew's cards line up this game. It's very poor. Yep. And these Draconic Roars have got to go. Yeah. That's at 3.30. We will be closing side events. They have done nothing. They are basically good against exactly Death Miss Raptor, and that's a card I'm not even sure is in Kent's deck anymore. Might not be in the deck, and I mean, really, I mean, if you kill Death Miss Raptor, how happy are you? Right, it's not not a key piece of the puzzle. Kent Ketter going to win game number two here over Matthew Longville. Green Black Dragons, Mardu Dragons, they're getting ready for game number three, and if you're Kent, you might be wondering, what, what are you doing over there? You didn't do much of anything. And, and here's another problem that comes up a lot of times when you're matchups like this. It's really easy to look at your sideboard that's full of removal, look at all of your opponent, look at your opponent's deck, and see that your removal spells all kill stuff that they have. And when you're in that position, it's very easy to over sideboard and bring in too much removal and cut some of your threats. Matthew still needs to be the aggressor in this matchup. Ken's late game has him beat by a mile. And so even though some of the removal spells Matthew has access to can kill some of the threats in Ken's deck, I think Matthew still better serve lightening up the total amount of removal that he has to make sure that he has an aggressive curve to capitalize on his on his haste creatures on the top end and kill Kent before Kent gets to things like looping Dragon Lord Dravoka with Haven. Those are the type of sequences that are hard for Matthew to beat. So I think he can't be that heavy on removal. He needs more threats, especially on the play. Yeah, these players are going to sideboard a little bit here for game number three. It looks like Matthew, because he's on the play, he's going to want to shift some things around. But we mentioned that Aliyah Trazi token, and you can see it right now if you haven't seen it just yet. It is him as the 4-4 Angel, which you can use for Entreat the Angels, Geist of St. Traff. What was the one you mentioned earlier? Decree of Justice. Ah, yes. The old man's Decree of Justice. And it is Ali holding his son Aiden there in the picture. So a great, great token. Something I'm sure Ali will cherish for a very, very long time. Yeah, and this will be available for free-ish in a little while here when you register for Open Series events, IQs, or place orders from the website. Yeah, place orders through Star City Games for $5 or more. Order dealer booth as well. And then... As you mentioned, signing up for the main events and the Opens and the IQs and all that jazz. That's how you get them. That's how you got Jacob Wilson's token. That's how you get this great one, too. It's Ali Antrazi, our Season 2 Invitational Champion here on the Open Series. And this is not limited to the premier IQs we hold at the Open Series events. You can get these tokens at your local store, too, assuming the IQ is big enough. Yeah. And it's a sweet, sweet, sweet token. Love that token. It's going to be a fun one to have around for a little while. Remember, these are all available for essentially the entire season. Yep. The end of season three in New Jersey, we'll have a new invitational champion. A new token comes down the pipeline. Getting to assemble the Legion token for you. Yeah. See, that's the that's a good example of a token where if you got it when it was a card people played in standard, very unlikely that card ports over into modern play. A little slow, a little expensive. And then that's... I won't say a waste of a token, because if you value it, you value it. But it's if you're looking to be on camera in perpetuity, not the best choice. Elemental tokens, though, Master Waves, uptick in modern play, now Grand Prix champion deck. That's a good choice. And you're a Master Waves token. You're out there a lot. Right. Because there's not just one of you floating around for the most part. Ali's token, Apple Goal in Legacy and in Modern. Yeah. That's the way to and do maybe it. even in standard. We don't know what Magic Origins looks like. Right, we don't. Could be a bunch of 4-4 so Angel That's tokens. how you do it. Pretty savvy. It's a great choice. I would want to be the 0-1 plant token now, by the way. Oh, you'd be a plant for Colony Garden? Yeah, an Adventures Endicar. Let's do this. <laughs> plant token's pretty funny. Let's go. A plant token without your face anywhere in the art. It's just a plant, and at the top it says Cedric Phillips. Perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. That's, that's exactly what I wanted. That's a good token. I'll be like Plant Man for Mega Man. It'll be great. Game number three is underway. It's a temple of malice to begin things here for Longville. Ketter with an opulent palace. 
Here's a Temple of Silence. So another slow start here for Mardu Dragons. All these lands under the battlefield tap, that's been an issue. And I don't know if that could have been prevented by different sequencing there as Matthew did have the Temple of Silence in the opening hand and drew the white two drop. Mm, okay. Well, there's a Bloodstained Mire. And now here's a copy of Self-Inflicted Wounds. So see you later, Carrie added. Which is actually a pretty important card to Kent's strategy. Definitely. Especially with, with Kent being on a mulligan here, any sort of disruption to his mana is going to be pretty powerful. Seder Wayfinder. That's going to net a Temple. Now Ketter gets to Scry. That's actually what I love about the opening turns of this deck. The opening turns are pretty fluid. Yeah, it's not as clunky as these four-color decks with a really expensive top end typically are. They're a seeker of the way. Pass the turn back over to Ketter. It's another copy, Seder Wayfinder. Haven of the Spirit Dragon is the find. The rest go to the graveyard. Now a carry added. So mana is really starting to get online. That means dragons are coming soon, you have to imagine. Yep. Longville will draw. It's a copy of Goblin Rabble Master. This is a land. Might be sacrificing both the Bloodstained Myers, it appears to be. For a mountain and a swamp. I mean, for both players, once they get to five mana, that's the flashpoint. That's when dragons start coming down. Then we can see some real interaction here. Yeah, Kent's, I think in this matchup, are more at six. I, I, wouldn't, I would be actually be surprised if Dragon Lord Ojitai was still in his deck. I think he's on Dramoka and probably Slovengar for this matchup. Yeah, Tarka too. I think a Tarka's probably pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The board impacting, damage racing type of dragons, I think, is the ones he wants for this matchup. There's Kolagon. There's an attack. I think we're going to see a double block real fast. Yeah. yeah. That's a no-brainer. Especially with Kent having foul tongue invocations in the sideboard. Yep. Keep the board clear as possible. And yeah, that got dashed. That's going to come back to the grip. Of course, you have crew fix the draw. Kent, you're going to play a Corsair. Take a look at the top card. It's a land of war waste. That's a hit. I don't think, yeah, I don't think he had a land in his hand. Deathness Raptor on top of the deck. Not only is that a land for Dragon Lord Dravoka, but that allows him to leave up Foul Tongue Invocation yep. this turn. That's a huge land. And here's a land. We might have a Storm Breath Dragon here. Oh, this this turn's brutal. Ugh. Yeah. There's Foul Tongue Invocation revealing Dragon Lord Dravoka. Get the four life. Kill the Storm Breath Dragon, which is actually a pretty problematic card against Kent's deck. Now you see the top card is Sylvan Carry added. Yep. Shrug of Shoulders. Play the Dragon Lord Dravoka. Attack here. I love that Ken has the same shoulder shrug every time he casts Dragon Lord Dravoka. Yeah, it's, it's been pretty consistent. It's this reaction of, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, sure, it's probably good. <laughs> Whatever. Not a lot of nuance with this card. Here's a go, boy. I hope that's post-combat. Yikes. If you can learn anything... from watching Goblin and Rabble Master, you do have the option to play it in main phase two. Yep. And that's really important so that your goblin doesn't give your opponent five life, as Matt just did right there. I wouldn't get too hung up on it because I think it, Matt couldn't kill Dragon Lord Jamoka, which means this game is over with Ken's life total being what it is. Yeah. But I do agree with you. Something to look out for in the future. Now, one thing Kent does need to be wary of is a card like Crux of Fate. Don't want to get beat up by that too bad. Here are the attackers. I agree with you, and I think that Kent will be cautious about it, but just look down at those havens. I mean, yep. he's just got a lot of protection right now against something like that happening. Here's a carry added. Here's a death mist raptor. Kent will have to take one to cast it. This is a great way to do it. You know, if, if Matthew wants to crux on dragons, it's a one for one, and if... Uh, Matthew wants to crux on non-dragons. He's down his own Rabble Master, and Kent keeps the best card in play. Yeah. So this is a very good way of playing around the possibility of Crux of Fate. Kent sitting on Dragon Lord Tarka on the table. That looks like a good spot to just deploy that, but Kent realizing Crux of Fate is probably the only card in Matthew's deck that can catch him up from this spot, and it's worth being a little bit careful. That's just definitely something to have in mind. That's exactly what Ketter has done at this point. Longville will be taking a draw step. He's going to need some real help here over the next couple of turns because he is behind on the table. On the table. 
Crux of Fate was the draw. Goblin Token and Goblin Rabble Master are going to come to the red zone. You see the blocks there by Ketter. Now here is Crux of Fate. So there goes Dragon Lord Dramoka. Cleans things up a little bit, but not a ton. Yeah, it can't really paid off for the way that he sequenced last turn. Top card's a forest here for Ketter. Forest on the battlefield. That'll trigger the Courser. Even more life. He did mention Dragon Lord Tark. He'll have to get the top card turned over there from Ketter. And there is the line of War Waste. Now here's an attack for two. Well, Longville doesn't have much going on in his hand at this point. So if you're cutting, you have to decide if you want to go to Dragon Lord Tarka. And it looks like he does. I think he shrugs every time he plays a dragon. Yep. I think that's where we're at with the shrugging. I think my slight preference that turn would have just been using a land to get back to Mocha, but it doesn't really matter too much. At this point in the game, I don't think it does matter a ton. Here's Dragon Lord Coligan. Pass the turn back. It's time for an untap and a draw. Land of Waste, the draw Dead Protector on top of the deck. That'll be the draw next turn, which will be a goodie. There's a land. That'll trigger the Courser. Catter up to 30. Activate the Haven of the Spirit Dragon. Get back Dragon Lord Dramoka. Or actually, let's get back Dragon Lord Tarka. Oh, that's actually smart. Nice. <laughs> it, took me, it actually took me a minute. Yeah, like, be... Why is he getting that back? He's like, oh, just to kill your creature. And then try to kill you. Well, I, the, the problem I have, I, I think Kent's going to win this game. I think that he's expending a lot of resources to go for the kill as fast as possible when there's no rush to do so. Right now, let, let's say Matthew untaps and plays Crux of Fate. Now it's, it's sort of a game all of a sudden. Yeah, depending on the string of draws Matthew has after that, I can agree with you there. And, and I think Kent's been a little too aggressive trying to go for the kill right away could have played a little bit more carefully. That said, he's just muscling Matthew's deck by such a degree right now that doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what his deck does, too, is it kind of just muscles opposing decks out of the game when we get to this stage of it, because he has Haven of the Spirit Dragon to get back a Tarka or Dramoka or what have you. He has Den Protector to get back those dragons or Death Mist Raptor. I mean, just a million different things that he can do in a situation like this. Didn't get a great look at the draw. Looks like it may have been Colgon's command. Foul song invocation in the hand here for Longville, but there are carry added to sacrifice. You can see the difference between Golgon's command in this format and in modern. It's night and day. Yeah. No snap casting mages to get fancy with. Very few artifacts floating around in standard. You know, the, the Kulagans command will allow Longville to actually get a dragon back from his graveyard, and then when you cast Foul Invocation, you can gain some life and go back up to six. And I'm not entirely sure that's going to be enough here either. It's probably one more turn. Yeah. Ketter going to unmorph Den Protector, which means Death Mist Raptor is going to come back from the trigger. Assuming there's one in the graveyard. There it is. And yeah, we'll see what Ketter wants to get back with the actual trigger from Den Protector. It's going to be a foul tongue invocation, it appears, for a little safety. And now you get a Haven activation. Gotta get back. Sure. Dragon Lord Tarka. I mean, you can just see how powerful the deck is once it gets to the late game. It's, it's yeah. complete insanity. Top cards from Den Protector again. Yep, here's a Dragon Lord Dramoka. Yep, if Jeroka resolves, yeah. if Jeroka resolves, there will be no responses because you can't. So there will have to be a response to this particular card. So step one is Kologon's command. Yeah, Matthew can shock the Den Protector, get a dragon out of his graveyard, and I think he goes down to... One when this is all said and done. Yeah, he casts Foul Tongue Invocation, goes up to six, takes five, goes down to one. And you saw the return of Storm Breath Dragon. So Kent will have to sacrifice something here. I believe it'll probably just be a carry added. Yeah. Ken can, can even float a mana and just play Deathmiss Raptor also. He's feeling so inclined. 
Yeah, because it's all in main phase one right now. Yeah. There's an Urborg. That'll trigger the Courser. Pass the turn back. And now Longville gets one more draw step. Stormbreath Dragon in hand. Picked up a copy of Bloodstained Mire. He'll play the Stormbreath Dragon and extend the hand. Kent Ketter's going to win this match over Matthew Longville. Two games to one. Green Black Dragons wins it. And for Ketter, a 10-0 start. Picked up three losses, but was able to bounce back and get two more Ws. He was in fifth place coming into the round, so he's in a top eight. Congrats to Ken Ketter. You saw game one. Uh, Ken's deck a little vulnerable to Storm Breath Dragon. Uh, it's a lot of damage, and Dragon Lord Dravoka does not defend it. Yep. But post board, when Ken has access to Foul Tongue Invocation and Ultimate Price, he's much better equipped to win the battle over Storm Breath Dragon.